Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's head it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place Hello and welcome back to Tommy Tastes. This is the channel where I taste gin so that you don't have to. But more importantly, how are we tasting? Neat! That's what I heard you say, bitches! Today we are going to try da -da -da -da, Larios 12 gin. Went for a Japanese gin last time, this time Spanish gin. Spain, in some ways, kind of the spiritual home of gin. Mary loves dick. Mary loves dick. Think of if you go to a particularly fancy bar and you get gin in one of those big kind of goblet-like balloon glasses. That's a real Spanish invention. So the idea behind it was that the chefs wanted some long alcoholic drink that wouldn't go cold over the course of the day. I don't really know what they're doing getting drunk on the job, but I have worked in a kitchen and trust me, getting drunk on a job is not like the worst thing that goes on there. The idea being get as much glass, uh, sorry, ice as you can in a balloon glass. And from there, you put a few shots of gin in and it's just kind of staying chilled and diluting over the course of a day. Why you can have water and ice, God only knows. But why drink water if you can drink gin, hey? Get it in one of those shitty kind of wool stencils um, along with life is love and never see darkness, things like that. Drink gin, not water. Way. As the name suggests, we've got 12 botanicals in this. Kind of the standard botanicals that you'd expect. Coriander, juniper, angelica root, licorice. God, Jesus, I tell you, that sounds bloody boring. God, I can't deal with this. Oh. But kind of interesting mix of some slightly more Mediterranean things, like we've got orange peel that's playing a big part in this. Also, uh, grapefruit, if that's specific to the Mediterranean, and also clementine, mandarin, and tangerine. So really going for the market on the easy peelers there. Um, yeah, that's probably what they should call it, easy peeler gin. She's an easy peeler. I was introduced to Larios when I actually went to Benidorm on a lads weekend. I mean, there was nothing particularly laddie about it. It was me and one other guy. I think the laddiest thing that happened is we got propositioned by uh, a sex worker and both ran away. Make of that what you will. <laughs> I think that will become my catchphrase. Uh, mm, we're moving into a tranquil background here as a moment of honesty comes out. I did remember that on this holiday, I also kicked a football back to some lads who needed it. Hashtag lads holiday. But I was trying Larios, the original one, so I'm guessing doesn't have 12 botanicals. I enjoyed it very much. It was a perfect kind of sunny drink. It tasted like a pretty standard gin. So this is kind of their upscaled version, where I think the Larios original one is about 37.5%, so really looking at the standard alcohol for a gin. This one's 40%. Let's give this Spanish gin a try. Are you honestly still talking? Really? Still talking? Talking? Still talking, talking. So the first thing I should probably say about Larios is it may come as no surprise to you that being a Spanish gin that's slightly less alcoholic and maybe doesn't have huge botanicals, this is a slightly cheaper gin that we're working with. Most of the time you can find this quite comfortably under 20 quid. So really we're going to see how it compares to things like Gordon's, Tanqueray, and maybe see where it comes in and if it's worth buying Larios 12 over the Gordons or the Tanqueray. Let's get our nose in that glass and see what happens. Breathe with me. So, really, it's the alcohol that's jumping out to me there first and foremost. Getting there nice and deep, black boy. But there's a nice bit of citrus in there, a little bit of licorice maybe as well. Oh, I'm getting uh, pissed. But yeah, nothing particularly complex, just kind of a light citrusy aroma. Let's have a try, neat, see what we think. We like to drink with Tommy, because Tommy is our mate. And when we drink with Tommy, he gets it down in 87654321. I mean, it's very pleasant. Citrusy, it feels a little bit muddled. So when I say that, what I mean is that you maybe can't distinguish 
one botanical from the other quite so well. With this one, what I'm getting is like a kind of generic citrusy component, maybe something like the grapefruit standing out more than any other botanical, and maybe even like the easy peeler that's coming out. Easy peeler, easy peeler. But maybe this needs a little bit of dilution to really bring it into its own. So let's take our trusty single ice cube and drop it in. As you can see, we're not going cloudy in there. So again, we're working with a nice chill filtered gin and let's see how it tastes. I'm a get, 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 get you drunk, get you love drunk off my hump. So it's not bad. It's not really altering the flavor that much. I'm getting a bit more of a tingle in the mouth. The licorice is becoming more apparent as is things like slightly peppery notes, but I think it's safe to say maybe not setting the world alight, but probably what you'd expect from a 20 pound gin. Guess who forgot to get tonic water again this week? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> trying to cut costs on the weekly shop. Pop a little splash of that in there and just see how we get on. So diluted there on about a one-to-one -one basis, I think. So let's see if it cuts through. Now everybody in the club getting tipsy. Okay, what we're working with at this point, it's a pretty generic gin and tonic. There's nothing unpleasant about it. On the whole, this is a really pleasant gin. It's just a little wishy-washy. At under 20 pounds, I guess that's somewhat unsurprising. What I did do in preparation for this video was check out the Masters of Malt website, which is my kind of go-to for anything gin-wise or whiskey-wise and gives me... This was one of my favorite ones that came in here. Larios 12 is made with botanicals including wild juniper, nutmeg, angelica root, coriander, mediterranean, lemon, orange, tangerine, mandarin, clementine, grapefruit, lime, orange blossom, and antifreeze! Now, this gin is really not that bad. I mean, if you want an antifreeze gin, then just, just pick up like Cromwell gin or something like that. Go to your local Aldi. That's just nonsense gin. And yeah, I know it won all of those awards about three or four years ago, but that's because it was entering competitions, which was like Devon's favorite spirit, Isle of Skye local parish, what's your favorite gin competition. It didn't mean anything that it was the world's best gin. It's, it's really bad. This is not antifreeze. I think it's safe to say, if you want to try antifreeze, you know, Get, get a four pound Pinot Grigio, that's antifreeze. This is nice by comparison. So, Shut up, you slag. I think if you're on a budget, Larios 12, you know, it's not gonna break the bank. There's enough about it that makes it interesting, but make this like your end of the night gin. You know, start off with something really nice. If you're looking for a Mediterranean gin that you can really enjoy, get your teeth sunk into Gin Mare. That's fantastic. But then after you've had a couple of gin mares and you're failing to appreciate it quite so much, break out the Larios. That's what it's for. This is like a, a cellar preserver. You know, don't waste your good gin at the end of the night. Waste it at the start or enjoy it at the start, perhaps. Yeah, buy Larios. But if you can afford to break that 20 quid budget, maybe don't buy Larios. Oh, we're in a disco landscape. Subscribe.